Yeah, hello, sir. Ah, hello, hello. Yeah, we are in live. We're in live. Okay, okay, great. Okay, so thanks everyone for showing up for the um for, for joining for this interactive session. And I think um so since there's a small number of people here, I want I want to just make one so so the basic uh so so I thought the way we'll organize this, everybody who's here, uh just make sure you ask at least one question. More than one is also fine, but everyone think of at least one question. It can be as trivial or as deep or as silly as you want, but just think of some question about the course and just type it into the message box below. So everybody do that now, even if you, and and you can also think of multiple questions and then we'll address those afterwards. So we'll so take a second to just think about a question and type it in. If you, if you, you can also type it in in a few minutes if you're taking some time to formulate it. So there's no pressure, but I'll just, let's just spend, I'll, I'll pause for say 30 seconds and you can try thinking of the question and typing it in. Hello, sir. Good evening. Uh, hello. Hello. I can I ask a question, please? Uh, sure, sure. You can ask a question. Yes. Sir, I want to ask about a linear space. Okay. In this course week first, uh, I learned about linear space as a set of points and lines and satisfying some properties. Hmm. And uh, in linear algebra, we see that hmm. li linear space is a set of vectors with uh, some oh, um, algebraic structure lies on it, like a field. I see. No, no, no. So so that's a separate notion of a, that, that's a separate kind of linear space. Maybe there it's, um, yeah, I mean, basically there you're thinking of a, a vector space, which has a this linearity property that you're talking about. So um, that that's different from the type of linear space we're talking about here. This is a much more basic type of um, situation, actually. Yeah, the the I guess the vector spaces in that you learn about in linear algebra they also have the same linearity properties that we're going over here in it so they you can there's a way to think of them as linear spaces in our sense but uh but I can see how that's confusing so don't uh, it's a separate thing what you're doing there we can just treat that as a separate idea okay so um yeah we'll see actually in chapter four in the fourth week we'll connect this to linear algebra and but I think um, so I'm just curious in your in your linear algebra class, do you actually use the phrase linear space, or do you talk about the um, the linearity of a vector space? I mean, I, I'm just wondering, do you actually use the phrase? I mean, the ter terminology you call that a linear space, or anyway, it's okay if you're not sure. So. Um, like, yeah. I think we so, refer it as a vector space. Exactly. Yeah, correct. So I think that's more common, but the, you know, all these terminologies do vary a little bit. So, um, so if there is some, it's possible that my terminology is overlapping with that and it's something else that I'm talking about. It's not the same thing. So just to clarify. So, so thanks for the question, Kamaljit. So maybe what we'll do right now, I just want to make sure. Um, so everybody please do think of a question and slowly write it down or ask it. But in the meantime, while you're thinking, maybe I'll also just go make sure that some of the basic logistics of the course are kind of understood. So um, so first of all, has everyone, um, is everyone, has everyone been to the course website? Are you going through the videos through the, um, through the companion site or through the Swayam YouTube portal? Um, Sir, we are going, I'm going through the website, course website, in which okay. there are various exercises and challenges. Okay, okay, great, great. I just wanted to make sure because those exercises will be, will make the homework much more easy, I think, and will tie into that. And also the drawing challenges, in order to do those, you have to do it through the website. So I just want to make sure that people are aware of that. So, um, uh, Hema, Jennifer, are you, you know about the website? Yeah, I'm going to the website. I just for the first lesson, I went to the website first and then I went to the uh, examples which we were going through. That means a bit, a bit of revision I did there. Okay, I went through okay. both. I went through both. 
okay cool cool great great so in the beginning i got, couldn't pick uh, get some words so i think in the second round when i went through the exercise and all those things i got, i could get it clearly <laughs> okay 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 cool no that's good to to know that that so the so that information about the website did did reach you all i wasn't i just wanted to make sure that the announcements and things are actually reaching students so the yes sir so that's okay okay great great and uh first one more person just came uh great um, mano manogna you you just came so i just to so you also know just please think of a question related to the course and write it down or you can ask it uh maybe it's also e if it's easy to write down just write it in the chat otherwise you can ask it out loud but i want everyone to ask at least one question so just think of some some question about the course it can be something very simple so hmm. okay so then about the other thing as you're thinking of your questions the other thing i wanted to just make sure everyone understood is how to submit the drawing challenges so from the website there's a it's i'll just share screen and show it quickly but and then we'll get to the questions so yeah so here's the course website this is what you if you just type in this url into your browser it's just a, right now it's a github site on my own github but uh, after the course finishes we'll transfer it to the nptel uh port um site into their github so you could just type that in i hope you can see can you see my share screen Yes, sir. Okay. So, so in this, basically, it's kind of organized like an ebook. So you can go through the different chapters. Each chapter for our course corresponds to one week. So, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four. I'll be posting by Monday, this coming Monday. But everything else is now posted, and the conclusion also I'll post on Monday. But chapters one, two, and three are posted. So if, for chapter one, which is completed now, you can click there. There's the intro video, which explains the basic drawing challenge from this week. And then each of these lectures you can go through. So basically these, so for example, this drawing, the first drawing challenge is from the inter, in course teaser video. And there, you know, it, it's basically based on completing this perspective view of the tiled floor, starting with this quadrilateral and only using a straight edge. So I hope, and then you can click, I'll just show that again. If you click here, um, below this right here, you can upload it to Padlet. So good. I see that some there have been some submissions. And to answer this question, there is no submission date except the end of the course. And I just want to make sure everyone taking the course tries attempts every challenge. So it's fine if you don't 100%, um, if you make some mistakes or you're not completely sure. But, but these are looking really nice. So um, the second challenge here is to complete the railroad tracks, railway tracks. And yeah, again here, um, ah, great. Yeah, so Rudra, for example, you submitted your, your first attempt. There was a mistake, but it was an interesting mistake. And it looks like you fixed it in the second one. So that's great. So if everyone can just try each of these drawing challenges, that'll be great. Because I feel that, yeah, actually working with, the, it, with your hands, that's when you start to really understand what's going on. So, okay, so I'll stop. And, and the other reason to go through using... Um, using the website is just that, yeah, there's a lot of questions um, in between the videos, which kind of tie the videos together and also will help you on the exercises. So if you're having trouble with the weekly homework set, there's a chance that some of these exercises will actually help you with, with those. So you can also keep that in mind. So, okay, I'll close the website for now. Okay, so everyone who just came in, I just want to repeat what I said at the beginning. So everyone, please, um, Think, think of one, at least one question about the course, about the material that you'd like to ask and, and write it down in the chat. Or now you can even just raise your hand and we can, we can go over it together. Okay, so Manogna says, um, sir, there's a question in assignment, in the assignment, which said skew lines can appear parallel in 2D. Uh, I was not able to imagine it. Can you please help me with that? Sure. So, um, Ah, that's great. So, so basically, let's. So, first of all, skew lines. What do we mean by skew lines? Well, skew, first of all, skew lines are lines in three dimensional space. They they can be in R three or in P three. This extended three dimensional space that we've been working with. So, um, 
be good to have a prop here. One second. So, like for example, you know, these are imagine that these pencil, these pens are actually lines that extend infinitely far in both directions. So right now they kind of appear parallel, but but basically skew lines are so so any two lines are skew if they're not coplanar. So if they if they if they never meet each other and they're not parallel and they they don't and you can't possibly put them in one plane together. So for example, if I take this and twist this like this, see like right now they're parallel. If I twist this forward, so you can I'm just rotating my body so you can see what I mean. Now these are skew in space. You can't possibly contain them in a single plane. They're not coplanar. And but but so here here they're parallel. Twisted this forward like this, so they're actually skew now in space. But if I, if you view the pen, pens from this orientation, they kind of appear parallel. If you didn't see that I had first taken them like this and twisted it like this forward, and remember these are infinitely long, you might think that these are parallel here. They're actually skew, but from this perspective view that you're seeing it from, they're parallel. They look parallel, so you can get misled in that way. So that's what I was referring to. Um, Manovna, does that make sense, that explanation? Sorry, Manovna, did it make sense? Great, 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 excellent. Yeah, and, and by the way, you don't, you, please, please don't call me sir. You can just call me Vijay or just, yeah, you don't, yeah, that, that's fine. Um, okay, and anybody else? So, um, yeah, so, so, Hema, Jennifer, uh, and Rudra, if you can also think of some questions, and Kamaljit, if you have any more questions, and Paul also, if you can think of questions about the course, about the material, or the logistics even, but ideally about the, the course material also. Um, also questions about the logistics are fine, but but also everybody think of some question about the the actual material we're studying. Or if, if there, it could be a bigger question, if there's something you're very confused by, and it's it, they, there's no no question that's too too silly or that. I that have you... actually asked, uh, posted my question on the Google form. Uh, oh, so okay, okay. To... Oh, okay, let me just check that right now. Maybe I'll, okay, can you copy paste it here so everyone can see it? I, I, <laughs> I have the Google form here, but just to make it easier for the other students to know it, we might as well put it in the chat also. So if you don't mind copy pasting it, or I can also copy paste it for you. Uh... Okay, I can, I can copy paste it here. I just got it. So this is a question from uh, from Rudra Joshi. So Rudra says, while proving that any line L doesn't divide P2 into two regions, we introduced line M. So, and we, and we said that um, line M will return to the point A, which is the intersection between L and M. So, um, so let me pull up a picture here so it's clearer. I'll just pull up, I'll just share the slides. Um, but I, so I'll finish reading this first. Um, so line M actually forms a circle with infinite radius on YZ plane or the plane perpendicular, perpendicular to R2. So if we imagine this 3D space, is it possible that the circle with infinite radius and other infinite circles with infinite radius form a sphere the size of the universe. Okay, nice question, interesting question. So let me just uh, pull up the um, picture so we know what he's talking about. Um, so one second. Oh, and by the way, I'll. I should also share the slides with everyone. So I'll send you links to the slides so everyone can access those if that's helpful. Um, second, sorry, just taking a second to find this image. Here we go. So I'm sharing screen. There. 
can okay so hopefully can you see the screen so 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 Rudler was just asking if this question about when we have p2 the extended plane with points at infinity everywhere and we imagine a line in it you might expect that that line separates it into two regions because we've already seen that this line it'll go off to the point infinity pl in this in one direction and the same point at infinity pl in the other direction so it connects up like a circle kind of and you it's, but it also looks kind of like a straight line so he had a nice way of describing that which is that um Ruther said that it's a it's like a, a circle with infinite radius so even though it's circular in shape it looks um it appears like a straight straight line at any when we zoom in at any portion of it so it's a little bit like how you know that the earth that we live on it's a sphere but it feels flat to us when we're living on it because it's, the radius is so big so if the radius is infinitely large in theory it would just look like a straight line anywhere so um so this line l it's it, it you it, you might think that it would divide this two-dimensional p2 into two regions but it doesn't and the way to see that one way to see that it doesn't is to just imagine okay we, we'd like to say that this is region a and this is region b but if we introduce another line m and kind of follow it along that intersects l at some point follow it along on one side of that point, cross the point at infinity and come back, it would come, we get into re the other region. So these two regions are connected that way. So they're actually just, it's actually just a single region. So um, so the question that about that, that uh, Rudra is asking is, okay, this line M, we ma let's imagine that it forms a circle with infinite radius. And um, in particular, if we imagine that the XY plane has been extended to become P2. So the XY plane is sitting in R3, and now we've extended it to make P2. So P2 is also sitting in really P3, but this extended version of R3. And um, so then this, um, oh, okay, okay. I mean, I guess you're, in your case, you're thinking of what the YZ plane instead of the XY plane, you can, as your P2, that's also fine. So any of these planes could be P2. Um, so that's a very good question. And actually, and it's really interesting. It's nice that you're thinking about, okay, what does the collection of these infinite radius circles look like? Because in some way, the connection of these infinite radius circles on P2, coming from P2, um, I'll just show the picture again. So I'll just rephrase your question. You're really asking, okay, what is the collection of all, like L, M, all of these lines are infinite radius circles. Now, if we take the collection of all of them, what shape do they form? Is it an infinite radius sphere is his question. That's a really good guess. In fact, that's kind of the most natural guess. And we'll, what we'll see in chapter four, in week four of this course, is that that's not actually what it forms. It forms something, they, together they're gonna form a two-dimensional space because they form P2. But what does that look like globally and it's not an infinite radius sphere. It's something similar in that it's also an infinite, it's also a two dimensional space. It also has circles that look like straight lines, but it's not a sphere. It's, um, it's basically turns out to be something called the real projective plane. And it's related to the sphere in certain ways, but um, it's, not, it's not actually an infinite radius sphere. It's fundamentally different in its topology. And we can, and but I can, so even though I won't say what that is, I can prove to you right now that this is not a sphere. And the way that I can prove to you that this is not a sphere is that it has a certain very non spherical behavior. And as several actually, one is the one that we just saw, which is that in the sphere, if you take one of these circles and subtract it, you do divide that sphere into two separate regions. If you, it doesn't matter if the sphere is finite dimensional or infinite dimensional, if you take a sphere and take one of its, say, great circles, subtract it you end up with two pieces like when you split a coconut so um so this is not so it fails that test of being a sphere and there's another test it'll fail of being a sphere which is a little bit um so can you can you guys see my cursor my mouse cursor i just want to i, I want to have a point pointing at things and i just you can okay good so so here we have these lines l and m now on this line m so let's say that we've we've um just, let's just imagine we're traveling along this line M. And let's imagine that as we're traveling along, we're keeping track of what's on our left and what's on our right. 
So in other words, let's imagine that the, this line M, it has a red side and a blue side, let's say. Let me just try and draw that one second. So, um, uh, so let's say that, okay, let's say that it has a white side here. Let's actually make that better color. Uh, so it has this red side here, and over here it has this blue. Uh, let's make it a better color again. Let's make it yeah this dark green green side. Oh, I hope none of you are if you're okay. Some people are red green. Green color blinds. So let me make this actually a dark blue. Okay, so we have a blue side here, and we have a red side here, and we're traveling along. Now we cross the point at infinity and come back. But now, as we're coming back here, the red side is suddenly going to be over here, and the blue side is suddenly going to be over here. We've kind of flipped or become our mirror image in a way. And one way to see that is that if you imagine, I mean, actually just imagine that like a, instead of a red side, this red is actually a red line, a little red arrow that's just angled a little bit up from our main arrow M. So it's gonna start here and it's gonna come back around from this side over here. So we've gotten flipped in a funny way, which, um, which would not happen in, the, in a sphere. So this is this is something weirder than a sphere, and it's the projective plane, the real projective plane. So okay, that's a long explanation, but but it was a very interesting question. So um, so hope that helps a little bit, and we'll see in much more detail about that in chapter four. Um, okay, are there any other? Uh, so again, a couple more. One more person has come. So um, just uh, the image which is formed on the plane, I'm not getting it. Not, I see. Uh, uh, yeah. Got the it. one image which I feel is uh, that is wrong. The answer what I've given is wrong. And mm. the answer, the correct answer is something which I'm a little confused with. How I see. Get I it? see. Yeah. Okay, so. Just sharing the screen one second. Okay, so here's. The final question. This is question twenty. So, so as Jennifer said, an artist sets up a large vertical glass plane in front of her, and oh yeah, basically. So, so maybe so. One very useful thing. So, so here's a bird's eye view right here that you see, where the two blue lines are the two um, uh, are the two railway lines. So each, and I'm kind of I'm simplifying it. So it's these are railway. Uh, these are not railway tracks, they're just railway lines. I mean, each of these lines, if we were to zoom in, it would actually be a pair of railway tracks. So there's a pair of rail railway tracks here and another pair of railway tracks here, but I'm just simplifying it in my image. So I'm just putting a single railway line here and a line here. So just to make this situation a little simpler. So I hope that part wasn't confusing. So, um, so one of these is, and, and this artist is standing at the intersection of these two lines. Yeah, actually, um, Oh, no, I didn't say railway lines. Okay, good, good, good. Because yeah, that, that would make things much more confusing. So there's just a pair of perpendicular horizontal lines on the ground. And the artist is standing on these lines and her head is directly above the intersection. So you can see in the bird's eye view, here's the two lines, here's the artist. And the glass plane is in front of her, sufficiently far in front of her that it covers, it crosses both lines. So the question is, what image will the artist draw? And uh, another caveat is that this is a kind of unrealistic scenario. If you were to actually stand on these two lines, I mean, you could do this, but you'd kind of have to, um, these lines would separate themselves from your out of your field of vision very quickly. So one of the reasons this question is difficult is because it's, um, it's a bit of a trick question in that you won't, in real life, if you actually imagine, being this artist sitting on these lines, the lines, because they're perpendicular and you're, if you're just looking straight ahead, they're gonna quickly go out of your field of view. So it's only by, for example, 
so this is more, maybe I could have made this simpler by saying, okay, imagine you take your phone and take a panorama shot where you kind of, or you take an extreme wide angle shot. But basically you're imagining that your field of view is also a little bigger than it really is so that you're able to see both things at once. So, so this is, so it's a little, I, that's another way this question is a little misleading. So we're really just using the rules of perspective, imagining that her eye, single eye is open there and she's seeing these two horizontal lines. So, uh, so Jennifer, which answer did you, what was the wrong answer? I mean, the, the, the answer that you thought should work, which turned out not to work. Just to, just to, just out of curiosity. Jennifer, are you there? I gave it as D. You wrote it as D. Okay. Yes. So if, no, no, that, all, I mean, basically, yeah, these are all, the, the, so, so with, it, I mean, D is certainly the most intuitive picture because that's what we're used to seeing. When we see two railway tracks converging, that is the picture we see. But that's not the situation here. We have two horizontal lines, which are not at all converging. They're not, they're not at all parallel. So on this horizon line, they, they're not going to appear to converge. So in D, D is what you would see if the artist were just standing on some railway tracks and looking directly in front of her and drawing what she sees. That, then she would see image D. Um, but actually what's happening is that these two lines are not far from being parallel and appearing to converge. They're not at all parallel. They're diverging in space. And I suppose, but I suppose that some, what, what will happen, they, they are each going to converge to some point at infinity on this horizon. line. So in A, B, and C, all of those show that, that these two lines converge to some point at infinity. Um, of those remaining options, again, in, maybe the real answer is the most counterintuitive. The, um, first of all, it's not going to be C because on the picture plane itself, as these points come closer and closer to the artist, they're just going to hit the ground. They're just going to hit the bottom edge of the picture plane in different spots. So like this vertical line, this line here, it's going to hit the picture plane somewhere here. This line here is going to hit the picture plane somewhere here. So it's not going to be C because in those, they appear to actually converge near, the, near where the, at the bottom edge of the picture plane. And that won't happen either. So it has to be A or B. And with, and now just imagine how one of these lines is, um, is going to look as basically imagine that you're the artist, you're following one of these lines off to infinity with your sight lines. Your sight lines are going further and further and further uh, along this line as it goes off into the horizon. And as that happens, you're the, um, I, I don't know if you saw this video where I talked about the, um, how, how a vanishing point can have, I mean, both a, there, there's sort of an, a, um, there's an eye level of the artist. There's also kind of this um, um, horizontal um, aspect. I mean, the place that it's, that it's sitting on this left, right axis. So as she's looking further and further along, that's not going to change. She's just going to be looking further and further along, following the line with her sight line. And it's going to appear in the picture plane to just go higher and higher up. It's not going, it's, it's, these sight lines aren't actually going to move, go. I mean, they're all, sorry, I'm saying this badly, but all of her sight lines, as she's looking further and further and further along this line, they're going to keep hitting this picture plane in with the same X coordinates. They're not going to move around this way. They're going to go higher and higher up, but their, their X coordinate on this picture plane is going to stay constant. And the same thing as she's looking further and further and further along this line, her sight lines are going to keep hitting this picture plane with the same X coordinates. So they're not going to move at all this way. They're just going to go higher and higher up on the picture plane. So in fact, it won't be B, it'll actually be A. Each of these will just appear as vertical lines in the picture plane. And although the scenario is a little unrealistic, if you were to have a wide angle lens, this is actually what you would see if you were to take a photo with a wide angle lens and set this scenario up. So um, Jennifer, does that help? Does that make sense what I'm saying? Uh, picture plane is uh, is where the artist is. Artist picture plane is in front of the, the so the picture plane is, is is a glass glass plane is not a picture plane. Oh no no sorry the glass plane is the picture plane yeah the glass hmm. plane is the picture plane they're the same thing 
So, hmm. um, yeah, yeah. So basically, I mean, the picture plane is just a plane. In this real life version, I made it a glass plane. But in even in our imagination, when we're viewing something, we can imagine a picture plane in front of us, which may not be made of physical glass. But if we imagine a plane in front of us, the picture plane, that gives us a way of representing the image that we see in our head as an image in physical space, which would be the image that occurred if we had a glass plane there and we drew exactly what we're seeing, where we're seeing. It. So, so this glass plane that she's using is actually a physical representation of this picture plane, this ab more slightly abstract yeah. picture plane. Okay. So when they use the word glass, probably there may be a confusion with a mirror. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Ah, yes. If this was, that's a very good point. Yeah, maybe in the future, I'll change this term word because it shouldn't, it's definitely not a mirror. If it were a mirror, then we'd get a very different image. That's definitely great. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Vijay. Sure, sure, sure. And great. Okay. And uh, Kamaljit, you had a comment uh, to make a rectangular hole and see through it. And you got option C. Ah, so... Um, let me just see that. Interesting. So you tried to actually physically do this and you got option C, but if you were standing on, if you imagine these two lines are on the ground or on your desk, for example, if you were actually the artist standing at their intersection, there's no way that you would see this place where they converge, right, Kamalji? Because you're actually standing there. So you would never see, um, and especially you wouldn't see it on this picture plane, this glass plane you would never see where those lines converge, which is what's happening in option C. If you were to stand, if the artist were standing here, not at the point of intersection, but somewhere back here, then you could get option C, that's correct. But if you were standing at the point of intersection, which is a kind of funny thing to do, then you would get option A. So um, does that make sense, Kamaljit? Yes, sir. Good. Okay, great, great. Okay, and a few more people have come. So again, I want every person here to ask one question about the material in the course. You're also free to ask questions about logistics, uh, dates, and things like that. We can figure that out. But also just try and think of one question about the material, the content of the course. So many people have done that already, which is great. And just those of you who haven't yet, think of some question you've had so far. Could be on the homework, could be in one of the lectures. <laughs> could be a more general idea of how this ties into other stuff. So just some question, it could be something very trivial. So yeah, go ahead. Uh, Vijay, uh, oh. is a challenge a part of the scoring? So basically what I want to do the challenge, it's it's not, it's a, I, it, everyone has to try each challenge. You have to submit something, try a drawing and submit it. it you're not, your um, score won't depend on how, um, whether you've got it right on the first try or anything like that, but everyone has to try it. And that will be a small part of the scoring, just that everybody attempted each challenge so that you, okay. you give each and, thing an honest try. And as a part of an exam, do we have to do anything like that for the exams? No, okay. in the exam itself submit. will be multiple. The exam itself will be multiple choice. That won't have a drawing oh. component. So. Okay, yeah, thank you. Sure. Yeah. Um, Okay, any other, anyone else, any, if you've asked a question already, that's also fine, you can ask more questions. But everybody who's come, everybody think of one question to ask, any question, and, and either type it in the chat or just ask it. So you can raise your hand or you can just oh, turn off. Ah, so Jay, Shri, and others who joined late, I, from the beginning, I was just saying, every, only thing is we want, I, only uh, thing I said at the beginning, if everyone who comes can think of some question related to the course and ask it. Okay, Jay, she's asking, is it MCQ type? I guess you're talking about the exam, uh, the, your, the final exam. And it, it is, yeah, the final exam will be MCQ type. That's right, that's right, great. So, um, so maybe Jay, Shri, Sandhya, Monojit, um, and Lakshmi, and Paul, if you could think of, See if you can think of some question about the course so far. Again, it's no question is is too um, basic or anything. I mean, anything anything you've been puzzled by, curious about, uh, please think of some question and type it in the chat, or feel free to ask it through audio if you're more comfortable with that. And TJ Shri, also you just joined. Again, you if you can think of some question related to the course, that'll be great. And meanwhile, other people who have come earlier, if you have 
additional questions, you can also ask those. There's no limit on how many questions. Excuse me, sir. Can ask. Yes. I had a question to ask about the week one content where we had mm -hmm. the uh, lines and then they were all the parallel lines. Like you have, you said the horizon line theorem, wherein uh, mm -hmm. all of them converged on, on a point on that particular line. But what makes it happen? Why don't they converge on some other line? Ah, uh, okay, okay. So you're saying, okay, the horizon line theorem, why do they all converge to that same points on one particular line? Yes. So, okay, so great question. So let me just pull up, pull that up one second. Okay, so I'm going to share screen and go to the horizon line theorem and just explain, uh, try and address your question. Um, Okay, so going up to the horizon line here. And I, I'll, after this finishes, I'll also share all my slides for the course. I think that might be, so I'll send links to those so that you can download these if you want to check something without having to go to the videos. Um, sorry. Yeah, so yeah, so basically, the when we're when we're looking through a picture plane or through a glass plane, when we're when we're looking when we're doing a perspective drawing, the it's not that all vanishing points will be collinear. It's not that all vanishing points will lie on the same line. It's all it's that all vanishing points of certain specific special lines are going to lie on this horizon line, and those special lines are. Uh, lines parallel to the floor, to the floor plane. So basically all the lines that are parallel to the floor plane, I mean, every line in space, every line in space is going to converge to some vanishing point in our image, in our, in our vision. On the picture plane, it's going to appear to converge to some point somewhere on the picture plane. That's true of any line in space. It's true not just of lines that are parallel to the floor plane. These lines here are all parallel to the floor plane, but it's also true of you know, a line that's angled up or this way or this way or this way, any other line. The only exception to that is lines that are parallel to our picture plane. Those, we won't see them converging to a point on the picture plane. But every line that's not parallel to the picture plane will appear to converge to some point somewhere. It might be far away. We might have to imagine that we're extending our picture plane, making it really, really, really big. But eventually somewhere on that picture plane, Every line in space will converge to some point somewhere on that picture. Plane. It'll appear to converge. But over here, we're not talking about any line in space. We're talking about lines that are parallel to the floor plane, these special lines. They might be elevated. They might be situated kind of high up, kind of low down, but they're parallel to that floor plane. So, um, and why do all of those lines converge, appear to converge to vanishing points on the horizon line? Well, it's it's basically that in e each of those lines, the way that we find the point that it converges to is to follow it further and further along with our sight line till we get a sight line which is parallel to that line. So all of these lines that are parallel to the floor plane, the limiting sight lines we'll get to if we keep following them further and further out are going to be sight lines that are parallel to the floor plane. So Really, we're looking at the, all of these sight lines parallel to the floor plane. And that collection forms a plane, kind of a sight plane, a plane coming out of our eye of sight lines parallel to the floor. And that sight plane is going to hit the picture plane in a straight line, because the intersection of two planes is a straight line. So that's where this horizon line comes from. So that's the basic idea. But uh, do you, does that? Does that make sense, uh, Chijashri? Or is there something that is confusing there? Oh. So if we have uh, sets of uh, like like these rail ties uh, on a particular at a particular height, then uh, hmm. why don't you said that they will all go down and all will have the same horizon line? But why don't Correct. we have several horizon lines parallel to one another depending on the height? And ah, the that's a very good question. So that's a very very good question because you might think 
we should have multiple horizon lines parallel to this horizon line that those ones converge to. But that is you're correct. I mean that that's 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 what one might think, but that's actually not the case. And let's just see. Uh, I'll just share screen again. And some of and these things you ask actually, is, uh, what, huh. like we don't form a particular plane. Like these are parallel to the floor plane. And that is one plane. So there are set, sets of parallel planes which intersect the uh, picture plane at uh, lines. Yes. Yes. So um, if you were to imagine, yes, yeah, so for example, if you were to imagine taking these railway tracks and instead raising them up, or for example, just imagine a house and the roof of, I mean, I guess maybe that best to show a picture. Um, the second. Yeah, so yeah, so for example, you know, in this painting, I guess I'll try and zoom in a little bit. So this painting here, we have um, in addition to the you know equivalent to the floor, these there's some obvious lines that are on the ground plane, and those intersect at this vanishing point right here. But there's also lines that are parallel to the ground plane, like this railing here. Or this top top of the bridge here, and those also intersect that same vanishing point because they're parallel to the ground plane. So they are, I mean, they're. They, and the reason for that is that if you imagine your sight lines following those along, eventually you'll get to that plane, that sight plane, that plane of lines going out, sight lines going out of your eye, which is parallel to the ground plane. There's only one sight plane that's parallel to the ground plane. And it's the plane you'd get if you were to translate that ground plane up to your eye. So all of these, um, on the other hand, if you were to look at lines that are not in that, that are not parallel to the ground, like if you were to look at one of these trusses here, these railway, these trusses of the bridge, these diagonal lines here, those are not parallel to the floor plane. Those are diagonal lines in space that are kind of going down or up, but they're not parallel to the ground plane. And those, will in fact, they do appear to converge in our picture plane. They're converging, I mean, they're, we have to enlarge our picture plane. They're outside of the painting. But they do converge to vanishing points that are not on the horizon. There's one up here, and there's one down there. And that's, and if you, what, and if you imagine the plane that these lines are part of, all these lines are part of a plane, but that plane is actually a vertical plane. It's a plane that's, you know, the plane of this side of the bridge, that's a vertical plane. And that's going to hit our picture plane at a different, a different line, not the horizon line, but a different vanishing line, which is this vertical line here through the center. So I don't know if that helps at all. Does that, does that clarify it? Or is your question still a little different from that? Uh, Tejashree? Yes, yes. I think uh, that depends on the height of the person. Uh, for everyone, there will be different horizon lines. Depending on the position, yeah. So, so where the horizon line t appears on the picture plane will depend on the eye level of the person, the viewer. So that's right. Yeah. So there is something there. Yeah. So the eye level of the person viewing it does will determine where that horizon line appears in the picture. Plane. That's right. Thank you. Sir. Sure. And uh, Paul, you had a question. Are perspective drawings measurable? So uh, can, do you mind uh, putting on your audio and just clarifying what do you mean by that, by measurable? Because there's different things you might uh, Yeah, that. yeah. Good evening, Vijay. Uh, it's mm, very nice, evening. you know, what we thought and what's ac what actually is uh, this, mm. this course. <laughs> but, you know, the objects, what we presume like square, mm. it appears, uh, you know, as uh, some other object, some other shape like trapezoid. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, like, like circle. Um, uh, hmm. you know, in other perspective, uh, if it is flattened, it appears like uh, something like ellipse. Correct. Correct. Yeah. It appears like an ellipse. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, each perspective or, you know, the viewpoint, it's some, something different. Can we measure? Is it measurable? Is it scalable? 
So by measure again, I, I so so it's a very good question. It's a very natural question. You're basically, I, if I understand correctly, you're saying that okay, the square can appear like a trapezoid, the circle can appear like an ellipse. So what um, what can we say about the sizes and distances of things? Is that kind of your question? Because like a square, you know, you know yeah, that yeah. in real life, in space, two things are three feet apart. You know that here's a table in front of me, my coffee mug and my photo are on the table here, and they're they're one foot apart from each other. In if I take a photo of it, can I tell that they're one foot apart from each other? Is that kind of your question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Whatever whatever we see in two two D objects and three D objects, we have formula, mm -hmm. we have set up, you know. Uh, actually, mathematicians they designed to measure it, uh, hmm. but in this case, you know, it appears something, and uh, we see something, and in perspective, is something else. But is it scalable? Hmm. So, is it basically nothing that we see? I mean, all these measurements that we're used to taking they kind of fall apart because the shapes can vary so much. So it's just from a picture, you can't necessarily know how how big something is, how far apart something is. The scale, we lose that sense of scale when we look at a picture. We almost need more information. So in that simple sense, just from a single photo, you don't necessarily, unless you have some other information, you don't know how big something is. I mean, that's one of the basic, most basic types of optical illusions people like to play with. You know, if, you, if, I, if I just show you a photo of, something you're not already familiar with. If you know me and you know that I'm six feet tall and then you see a photo of me, you'll know that, okay, this thing is six feet tall. But if you don't know me or if, or if I show you a photo of you know, a very tiny chair, and, but I've arranged it in such a way that there's nothing else to compare it with, then you don't know that that's a tiny chair. You think of it, it might be a regular size chair. So, I mean, basically, you know, people can play with this because just from a photo, we don't know the scale of something. But what we'll see in chapter four in the fourth week is that there is, if we have a, if we have multiple photographs or if we have a little bit more information in a photograph, um, we can actually say a lot about the size and shape and um, distances between things. So we can figure out the scale. And that comes from this very strange property. I find it very strange even now called the cross ratio. So there is in fact, something we can measure in a photo in the relation between points on a photograph, which is not, the distance itself doesn't tell us anything. And the ratio between distances doesn't, but certain special ratios of ratios. So if you have three points and you take the ratios of those three points with respect to each other and take a ratio of those, that is actually fixed. That's constant no matter how you angle your photo, no matter where you take the photo from, that ratio of ratios, the cross ratio is actually preserved, so to speak. So that's something very special and that's kind of the most fundamental invariant, they say, of projective geometry, of perspective for that reason. And it's a very strange thing because why would this, all these things are changing, why would this ratio of specific ratios, it's a special particular ratio of ratios, so you can't just take any ratio of ratios, but this particular one, why is that suddenly preserved no matter how you angle your photo? So in that sense, yes, something is there that you can measure. And some, even though the or regular scale you know, we can't necessarily say anything. We can actually, once we start measuring things, and if we have a little more info, we can actually say quite a bit about um, the scale of things. And that's actually the main purpose of our fourth week of the course is to understand. So um, does that answer your question, Paul? Or does that address yeah, yeah. And now, just now I was remembering what, you know, your comparison with uh, Kepler's third law of motion is also the same thing as you were saying the ratio. Hmm, hmm, hmm. That is how, you know, Copernicus failed and Kepler came into picture. See, so he hmm, gave the third hmm. law of motion, Kepler's third law of motion based on the ratio. That's what he said, you know, you can measure the distance of planet to that of the sun. And hmm. it is, it's not so easy as we think. It's very good, you know, geometry of vision. And your way of teaching is also highly appreciable. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, Okay, and uh, Teja, she's asking, uh, are there some activities, projects, or games related to this course that can be taken for students from non-mathematical background? Um, yeah, I think so. I, I definitely think so. I mean, just as it is, you wouldn't want to maybe present the course to somebody. Uh, for these drawing challenges, if they're framed in the right way, I feel even, say, a middle, middle school student 
can actually en enjoy them and get something out of them. So it's, um, you know, so it's, it's, it's a little bit about what vocabulary and terminology we use. So I think, you know, as it is, maybe the intro videos to the course, this course, each week there's an intro video. I've tried to make those a little bit more accessible to people from less mathematical backgrounds. But for, say, high school or middle school students, maybe one can even take these activities and frame them in a slightly more, um, even less technical way, but still which, which without diluting the basic idea. So I think it's possible. Um, in particular, and like those two activities, there are other uh, activities too. I mean, I think with just perspective drawing, I really like giving activities. I didn't do it in this course, but for example, just a, a nice activity for um, any people from any background is to try drawing um, letters, letters of the, I mean, ideally letters that have straight lines, like the letter uh, A, um, the, the letter T, they can have some curves, but, but some straight lines, the letter R, the letter um, Z, Z. So like just try and draw block letters in one point perspective, two point perspective, three point perspective. And that's much harder than you might think at first. So I think there's some interest, I mean, with that, I think one has to make it much more specific. Like if you're working with some kids or something, give them a very specific challenge like that. But there's lots of interesting challenges like this that you can give, which end up being quite a bit more interesting than you might expect. So um, I don't know if that answers your question, Tejashree. So, um, And um, Lakshmi, you have a question. If two objects have the same perspective or the same viewing point, then the vanishing point is also the same. Okay, so uh, maybe, do you mind putting on your audio, Lakshmi? I just wanna clarify one thing with you. So when you say two objects have the same perspective, uh, what do you mean exactly? Can you give an example? Uh, Lakshmi, are you there? Uh, Varadaraju, Tendra Lakshmi? Hmm. Yeah, so I think, huh, continue, continue. So you're, so you're seeing two objects at the same time? And they have the same perspective, same view point. So I think I understand your question. And yeah, exactly. So basically, if you're seeing uh, two objects that have the same, I would say, I would rephrase your question as saying two objects in front of you have the same orientation in space. Like two lines are parallel to each other, for example, or two squares are somehow translates of each other, but they're oriented in the same way in space. And your viewpoint is fixed. Then. The question is, is the vanishing point also the same? And the answer is yes, yes. That's actually the main, if that's the main um, uh, kind of um, result of this vanishing point theorem that we talked about in the first uh, lecture and the horizon line, I mean, mainly the vanishing point theorem, which is the surprising thing that yes, you no, know, if you're, view, you're at a fixed viewpoint and you have two objects in space that have the same orientation, then they will, the line, any two sets of parallel lines will converge to the same vanishing point. So that's entirely dependent. So, um, so, so in answer to your question, yes, that's right. I would just say, yeah, maybe if two objects have the same orientation, two lines have the same orientation in space, then they will have the same vanishing point. Great question. Yeah, and um, great. So I think, yeah, I mean, I guess those of you who haven't asked a question, Monojit or um, I think everyone else has asked, but yeah, feel free to ask one. Asandia, if you have any, any, if you could think of a question that relates to the course, it'd be great if you can ask it. But um, I also don't want to put too much pressure. So if you're if you're feeling shy, but it'll be great if you can ask something. Um, and great. And maybe, so maybe what we have just a couple of minutes left, actually just two minutes. Um, yeah, would it be helpful, by the way, I mean, just as advice, I, would it be helpful if I also send out the slides for the class to everyone? I mean, to, to the whole, to everyone enrolled? I imagine that'll be useful. 
Great, great. Okay, so I, yeah, so I'll make those publicly available. Cool. Any more questions before we finish? We still have two minutes. So are there any final questions? And I guess everyone who came in after the beginning, I just want to make sure so everyone is aware of the course website. I'll just share it one more time because a few days ago, I got I, I, another group of students said that they have, weren't aware. That's why I'm just making sure because without that, doing these drawing challenges and even doing the questions becomes difficult in between the videos. And those help you a lot with the homework questions too. So I want to make sure when you're watching the videos, you also do these multiple choice questions on the website. So um, just show that. Yeah, so this is, yeah, so basically, if you go to this URL, this goes to the main course website, and then you can go to each week corresponds to one chapter, right now in chapter two, for example, and you can go to, say, this lecture six, and then between the lecture videos, you'll have these little multiple choice questions, which kind of help reinforce those videos and also will help with the, with the weekly homework sets. So, so definitely do, do the course through this website. Um, and you can also do the drawing challenges this way. So for example, for this challenge four in week two, you can click here to get to the worksheet and you can click below to the Padlet site, which lets you submit your uh, submission for that challenge. So, okay. And uh, Mono, okay, Monojit has a question. So we'll finally do his question as the final one. Uh, how, so the question is, how can we change projection of a coordinate manually? Um, maybe let me copy paste his question onto the main chat so that everyone can see it. So this is from Monojit. How can we change projection of a coordinate manually? Um, so I think what you're asking, maybe if you want to clarify, please clarify this. The You're asking kind of if we're... Is your question kind of like okay if we're a com if you're a computer programmer doing some computer graphics thing and you want to um, say um, use a different or basically what are you asking like if you want to do a perspective transformation of an image so you have say an image of a square and you want to know how would it, how how it would look if you were to turn your camera like this but you want to do it computationally. Is that kind of your question? By manually, you mean like, how, how would you actually compute with numbers and functions this perspective transformation? Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, that's a very good question. And yeah, that also is a question we'll address in chapter four, in uh, week four of the class. And but basically it comes down to, there are some, to some basic linear algebra and some matrix multiplication. So if we can, um, all of these perspective transformations we're working with, it'll turn out, can be captured analytically uh, in terms of um, matrices, which accomplish basic perspective transformations. And it ends up being a matter of matrix multiplication, essentially. So that's kind of at the heart of computer graphics, for example. And it's how you would actually get your hands on doing a transformation. The same thing would be true of like, say these, you know, your phone, when you scan a document, but you do it at a strange angle, your phone can correct that and make it look like you're seeing the document at an ordinary, um, in the most ordinary, uh, friendly angle. So it, it really comes down to simple matrix multiplication, but to develop why those matrices work and how they work does take a little bit of, uh, does take some, um, some theory and some investigation into some basic linear algebra. So we will look into that. That's actually also the, a big part of week four of this class. So, um, Okay, and one follow-up question from Monojit. How to find the angle of a plane uh, with respect to the viewpoint given four 2D points from a perspective view? Ah, so you're saying you have, so, oh, okay, great question. So I think you're saying, look, suppose you're looking at a photo, you have a quadrilateral in that photo, you have four points on a, on a, on a plane, on a ground plane. And if you, 
that alone isn't enough to tell you the angle of your viewing plane, the angle of your view, viewing plane, of your picture plane. But if you know that those four points actually represent a square in real life, so you know that those four points are not just, are not say a diamond or a parallelogram or something, you know that they're actually a square in real life. And we're looking at a photo of this thing that's actually a square, but here in this photo, it looks like some other quadrilateral. And these are four points. Then you do have enough information actually to figure out the orientation of your picture plane. It's not, I mean, computationally it will be, take some work. So I can't just give you the answer in one sentence exactly. But again, that is something we will look at in chapter four. We'll develop the basic framework, this analytic framework for addressing that question and solving it. So it's something that's possible to do, but you need that extra knowledge that these four points actually represent a square in real life. Because without that knowledge, uh, there's some ambiguity. You know, you could have a square, you could have, say, two different quadrilaterals on the table in front of you. One could be a trapezoid, one could be some weird other quadrilateral. You could somehow set up your camera to make each of them look like this, have the same image. So, so there's some ambiguity. You need some extra knowledge in this case that, for example, those four points are actually a square. Then with that extra knowledge, you can do some linear algebra that will tell you what the orientation of your picture plane here actually is. So I hope that kind of answers your question. Okay, are there any algorithms for finding? Okay, Mona just asking one final question. Uh, are there any algorithms for finding the projection of a point onto the complement of a convex set? Okay, that's a more involved question. So I think maybe we can, if you're interested, we can talk about that more later, but I'll leave that, I think, since we're running out of, we're kind of out of time for the uh, help session and that uh, we can, I, I'll leave that as a question that we can discuss later, and maybe anyone who's interested can also ask about that. So, because, yeah, he, he, so that, I'll just put, paste your question here so everyone can see it. Monajit asked, one second, this question, but that's a more technical question, and um, it was just fine. It's great to ask technical questions too, but um, the yeah, but the, but yeah. So um, ah, so Teja she's asking how uh, when will the next live session take place? So um, by the way, also there are the TA. There's a TA who's running live sessions every week. I don't know if you uh, any of you went on Monday, I believe. So he's going to be running live sessions every Monday. Uh, and but uh, separate from that, I'll also be running live sessions on um, so each week. So next week I'll run one on, I, I, I'm thinking more or less this time. So is this time good for every, people here? I mean, the people who showed up just now, does does this time work on Thursday next week? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Cool, okay, so so yeah, a week from now, we'll just do this, this again. So. Great, great, so then we'll finish there. And I also just wanna say that, you know, anyone is free to email me at any point if you have other questions. You don't have to wait for this session necessarily. And maybe just use my, either my, my CMI ID, or you can even just use my Gmail. So if you want to contact me directly, you can just do that too. So, great. Cool. So we'll, we'll finish there. And, and yeah, do, do try the drawing challenges, please, everybody. Uh, for those who didn't, who weren't here when I said, it, I mean, there, you know, it will be a small part of your grade that you attempted each one. It won't matter if you do it wrong or if you have, if, it, if it's, it doesn't matter if it's off quite a bit or if you made a mistake and stuff. I just want everyone to attempt every drawing challenge. So, um, oh, uh, so what, okay. So uh, can you, so I'm a little confused about how the communication is working in terms of these Zoom links and stuff. So, uh, so there's a question here that's been asked. Can we get Zoom links in our mail IDs for every session. Uh, can you just clarify what you mean? Or do you mind putting on your audio and asking? Because I'm also confused by this, but maybe we can figure this out because I'm not sure how best to communicate announcements to people um, in the system. So, um, so how, I mean, how, how, does anybody, or maybe anyone else who wants to step in, how is there, was it clear the Zoom link that you got for this session just now? Was it easy to get? 
Yes, sir. It was on our email ID. We are actually getting the website links, all the assignment links, and every link on email ID. Registered. Oh, email okay. ID. Just in your regular email. Great. Okay. Then it's fine. Okay. So I think um, that should be happening already to the person who asked. If not, maybe maybe your mail ID hasn't been given properly. So maybe you have to fix that uh, with NPTEL. Cool. Okay, so I think we'll finish there and I'll see you, I'll, I'll do it again exactly a week from now. So see you all then. Yeah, thanks a lot. And yeah, so take care. See you all later, bye.